finally revealed. New shocking Japanese female humanoid robots. In recent years, robotics in Japan has exploded with a wide range of robots for industry, businesses, and household activities. Japan is one of the top countries in the world when it comes to robotics, automation, and RPA. With major Japanese robotics businesses like Kawasaki, FANUC, Mitsubishi, and others, it is particularly popular for making industrial and mobile robots. So in today's video, we'll discuss on new, shocking Japanese female humanoid robots. Interested in learning more? So keep an eye on the footage. Hello everyone! Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and click the notification bell button to stay up to speed on world politics, finance, international markets, space, and anything else in the world of technology. Humanoid robots, humanoid entertainment robots, animal robots, social robots, guard robots, and many other robots are manufactured by Japanese companies. In Detroit Become Human, Chloe is an RT600 android. She is Cyberlife's first perfected android model. But is this humanoid the best for humankind, or will it prove to be a disaster? Following that, other improved Chloe models, such as the ST200, were created in her likeness. In the game's menus and settings, there's an ST200 Chloe. Elijah Kamsky's first Cyberlife robot, the RT600 Chloe, was released in 2021. She is Cyberlife's first personal assistant, and she is designed to assist people with common duties such as housework and scheduling appointments. She also holds the distinction of being the first android to pass the Turing test. Chloe ensured Cyberlife's success by openly passing face-to-face -face tests in 2022. Chloe filmed an interview with KNC in 2024. She now keeps Elijah Kamsky company at his secluded Detroit home, along with a few other Chloes. Chloe appears in this chapter regardless of the player's actions. When Connor and Hank Anderson arrive at Kamsky's residence, she answers the door and leads them to Kamsky. Later, Elijah delivers Connor a gun and tells him that in order to get more information, he can kill her. Chloe has light skin, blue eyes, and long blonde hair in a low ponytail that flows over her left shoulder. She has blue eyeshadow on her lids and pink lip gloss on her lips. Chloe is dressed formally in a dark blue gown that reaches her knees and no shoes. The other Chloes look to be wearing a bright blue bikini in two pieces. Her personality is unknown, although she appears to be faithful and submissive to Elijah. She refers to him as Elijah. According to the lore of Become a Human, Elijah Kamsky constructed the first RT600 android, Chloe, in 2021. This model is also the first to pass the Turing test, which means it can perfectly replicate human behavior, fooling humans into thinking it's a real person rather than a computer. What makes Chloe unique in the game's universe is that she is the first person you encounter through the interactive menu, and she is also at the center of a pivotal plot point. Finally, when she asks the players to choose an ultimate option at the end of their trip, she gives a sense of finality. Thus, it's only natural to let her shine here. After all of that, we wanted to give her a well-deserved tribute by sharing some of our behind-the-scenes production secrets. Furthermore, throughout her famous poll, which received millions of responses from all across the world, we have obtained some remarkable statistics. Of course, these responses are completely anonymous, and we only know the country where the game is played but it's still an interesting experiment that we wanted to share with you. At the end of the project, we began to question how we could make the main menu stand out. We assigned Chloe to a certain location and attempted to make her intelligent, with one of the goals being to make her aware of the environment. We knew, for example, that we had access to the console's clock, which allowed us to determine the day and time of connection, as well as nation information. So we began preparing lines in case the game was released on Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, July 14th in France, or July the 4th in the United States. As a result of this, we made the menu more sophisticated so that it behaved differently depending on the day of the week. The amount of time since our last connection, and finally what we were doing in the game, as if it was aware of our choices, by expanding the script's entry points, depending on situations and variables, we were able to develop a behavior that resembled awareness. And to cover as many complex scenarios as possible, we shot a lot of lines. All of this was completed between the alpha and beta versions of the game, that is, late in the development process. Finally, we felt that we wanted to provide a complete story with a sense of finality. So we envisioned the final quandary. Would the players agree to let Chloe go, or would they choose to keep her, even if it meant wiping her memory? we realized that the vast majority of individuals had let her go, indicating that we had succeeded in forming an emotional bond with her. Yet, several people claimed that Chloe had truly vanished. 
so in any case, we produced a patch to allow her to return after a bit. And as for why we chose Chloe in particular for this interactive menu, we thought she was a simple model, a rather common android. It was also intriguing to have a character whose model is included in the game, and we reasoned that Kamsky was most likely one of them. Chloe's creation is tied to Kamsky's scenario. Previously, we had only encountered androids calibrated for specific roles in society. But now we learn that Kamsky has also made models for himself, who are more like companions. The first thing that came to mind when I saw Chloe's outfit was that we were in Kamsky's universe, which is very design-oriented and a polar opposite of the very codified approach we've seen thus far, such as with the famous wristband. We ditched it in favor of a more modern attire, because Chloe shouldn't stand out in this universe. Thus, the contrast was necessary. I wanted to restore a sense of elegance to her appearance, so that when she greets Connor and Hank for the first time, she looks elegant. She's unnerving, and you're not sure if she's Kamsky's friend or another robot. I also wanted her to be barefoot, to imply that she was both elegant and at ease at home. At home is an ambiguous term for an android. I wanted to incorporate these feelings into the design from the start. The second factor is that I don't want anything too mass-produced. There's a chic and refined side influenced by 70s Holtz Kutcher, a traditional vision of femininity, and in the end, we stick to the sobriety of lines and materials. The goal was to indicate that she was at home, despite the fact that for androids, the concept of property has no value. I wanted something modern, flawless, almost surgical for the entrance scene. The questionnaire, a very soft, extremely tranquil, reassuring cosmos, as in a dream. With that in mind, I went for a more high-tech, less personal look for her. It's more like a receptionist, who arrives to reassure guests that they're dealing with a produced item. When compared to the scene at Kamsky, there is a slightly enticing element to it. But in the two versions of Chloe, I didn't use makeup because I wanted to stay natural. It's part of the codes. There's no sense of personalization. So it also extends to the haircut, which is a clean, natural style with no frills that is both effective and reassuring. Chloe is incredibly open about the inner workings of a game like Detroit Become Human. From the short film released before the game's release, to the scene at Kamsky's house, then to the game's home menu. Not to mention various promotional movies produced subsequently, she exists in several variations, played by several actresses. Gabrielle Hirsch is the first actor to play her, and she also gives her looks to the role. She shot the short film and the scene at Kamsky with us in 2015. However, in 2017, she was no longer available to shoot the intro menu. Having said that, as we near the finish of this video, we'd like to thank you all for sticking with us. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. Most importantly, if you want to be kept up to date on anything relating to space and the internet, you should subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, peace.